Hello everyone, I am Siddhartham. This is the ninth project video in our deep learning course and in this video let's understand how we can build a and return digits generator using a deep convoluted generative adversarial network commonly known as DC GANs. So before going into the coding aspects of how we can build this GAN and how we can train it, first let's understand what is meant by a GAN and what are all the building blocks of it. So in a generative adversarial network, the two main aspects are a generator and a discriminator. The work or the purpose of a generator is given a particular random input. So random input when we say it's what we call a latent noise where it contains some numerical values and getting this as the input it would generate an image that closely resembles the real image. So let's say that in this case we are uh, the data set that we are taking is and return images right the MNIST and return data sets and this generator should uh, generate the image that closely resembles the and return images and then we have the discriminator that kind of looks at both the real image and the image that is generated by the generator. So this doesn't know which image is which one. So it doesn't know which image is coming from a generator and which image is coming from a real uh, image data set. So it has to look at both of these samples coming from real images and generator and it should, it should say that whether it is a real image or fake image. So ideally the discriminator should say that all the images coming from this sample from the real images are real and all the images coming from this sample from generator are fake image. So in the training of the generative adversarial network the key factor is training both the generator as well as the discriminator simultaneously and both of these kind of collides. So the generator tries to build images, generate images that is close to real image and it tries to trick the discriminator saying that let's say the discriminator won't be able to say that this is a fake image so it should reach a point the generator should reach a point where the discriminator cannot distinguish between a real and fake image so that is like the core concept of this generative adversarial network where uh, again we are building this generator that is as good as building images that resembles the real data set so i hope everyone is clear about the conceptual aspects of this now let's understand how we can build this in python so the main uh, part of this is building two separate neural networks for generator where it takes this uh, random input builds an image and the other one is like just a classification neural network that classify an image as real image or fake image. So for this we will be uh, building this code in TensorFlow. So we'll be use a be using a bit of keras but it, it will mostly be on tensorflow all this training loop that we do uh, maybe at a later point i'll make a video on how you can build this dc gan in keras so that it can be a bit a bit slightly easier but yeah in this video it, it's it's going to be like mostly tensorflow so i have this google collaboratory environment and i have all this code and i'll uh, explain this code line by line to you and uh, gans actually require a uh, stronger computation power so it definitely needs a gpu and in this case the image that we are taking are smaller images so we'll we will be working with 28 comma 28 uh, pixel image which is like we know that it's like a really small image and we have one channel which represents the grayscale image you can also build gans that can generate larger images with rgb channels but you will need like a larger gpu so for now we are just going with like a smaller data set so it's like computationally heavy process so open your google collapse and share you the link of this collab notebook as well go to the runtime make sure that you are connected to a gpu environment so cpu is going to take forever so make sure that you are on gpu so i'll save this and i'll run the first cell where we are in installing the required libraries so we are installing tensorflow image i want tensorflow docs so these are the things and, and we are importing the required dependencies so we have this glob so this glob library is basically used to match the pat patterns so it's when you give a directory so it, it scans through the list of files in the directory and let's say that we give a pattern so extract all the files or give a list of files that start with the word image 
or ends with the extension .jpg so it would return the list of all the files with that names so it's mainly used for that particular pattern matching thing and then we have image ivo used for reading and writing of images and a matplotlib.pyplot as plt so this will be using in order to display the images generated by the generator and so on and then of course we have the numpy library used for some scientific computation of arrays matrices and so on and then we have os library in order to navigate to uh, directories create directories and so on and then we have the deep learning framework tensorflow which will be using for uh, you know building this networks and and kind of creating this training uh, training step training loop and so on and then from tensorflow.keras we are importing the layers so from this we'll be importing layers like convolutional layers uh, convolutional 2d transpose layers and so on and explain you later like what all of these means and we also are importing time uh, library to kind of find how much time it takes for each epoch of training and then we have ipython so from ipython we are importing display so this is used to display the images that we are getting like at the end of epoch so basically for displaying the images so that's about importing the dependencies so i will run this cell the next step is loading the data set so as i said we are we are working on generating and return digits so for that we will be using the mn ist data set from tensorflow so the main concept of i mean the main uh, outcome of this video is, is not to generate and written images but to understand how we can build a gan so that you can use this code to build you know a gan for any images let's say that you want to generate car images or uh, uh, medical scan images so you should be able to do that so that's the main purpose so let's understand the process of doing this so in this case we are going with uh, this tf.keras.datasets.mnist load data and if you can also instead of this you can read it from a directory where let's say you have thousands of images so you are going to load that to a numpy array and let's say you are going to train your game so you can do that as well you just have to replace this particular line of code so uh, the tf.keras.datasets.mnist load data so this basically downloads your data and we are going to save that to this two tuples so this is the first tuple and this is the second tuple so uh, this basically returns two tuples the first tuple is for training data set and the next one is for test data but again here we are not working on classification so we actually don't need the test images so the training in, in training images are sufficient for us so uh, the first element of this tuple is the training images the numpy arrays and the second element is the labels again the labels are also not required for us we are basically interested in this uh, images only so that we can generate images that are similar to it but this is how you can load it so we will be later using this train images so that's about this line and now we are going to do some processing on this image the first step is kind of reshaping this so here i'll create another cell and i'll show you what's the shape of this train images is so let's say uh, train images dot shape near the output that we are going to get is uh, 60,000 so we have 60,000 images 28 into 28 so we have 28 image with 28 pixel height and 28 pixel width but we also need another critical information which is the channel so the number of channel here is one right so we need to reshape this array such that uh, we are getting this shape as 60,000 comma 28 comma 28 comma 1 so we have this train images so train images is equal to train images dot reshape and train images dot shape of 0 28 comma 28 comma 1 so when i say train images dot shape of 0 it's nothing but 60,000, right so i'm kind of reshaping this just by adding another channel so your rgb image would have three channels are red green and blue but again grayscale it's a single channel so that's what we are doing and we are changing all the elements present in it so to float 32 so uh we can show this too as well so we have train images and i print the first element of this so we are seeing the value right 28 comma 28 array so i'll click the show data so this is the data so if you see this is actually in the form of integers right so this is a grayscale image and we are kind of seeing this integers but i want to change this to floating points so i'm saying as type float 32 so this again is useful uh because when you have all those values in this floating point it also helps in your training so it, it kind of stabilizes it a bit so it's like slightly better if you have this as floating and later we will also do this normalization process as well so it's, it's better to have this as float so this step is reshaping this such that it has this channel information and also the data points is floating 
And once we do that, the next step is normalizing it. So you probably would know this at this point. So normalization is in an image, right? All the pixel values range between 0 to 255. In a grayscale, 0 means uh, black and 255 means a white, right? So 255 white and 0 black and all the other values are different shades of white or black. You can think about it that way. And uh, when we train a model, it always uh the model is able to work well the net neural network if you are working on a classification uh neural network convolutional neural network it is going to predict well if if your data is like normalized when i say normalize we scale the values between 0 and 1 so instead of between 0 and 255 we normalize it we scale it between 0 and 1 right uh just by dividing it with, with you know 255 but in the case of GANs, it's kind of uh Kind of like it's observed that the network kind of performs well if the values range between minus one and plus one so instead of zero and one here we are going to have the data between minus one and plus one so for that this is the formula so we have the strain images minus 127.5 that means like all the individual pixel value so we are subtracting 127.5 and dividing it with 127.5 so you are the zero would now become your minus one and your 255 would become plus one and all the other values in between would be between this two minus one and plus one so that's the step here and you can again check the shape as well so we have train images dot shape so I'll show it to you so here we would have 60,000 and let's also print the first element here and see like how the value is so we have minus one uh, plus one so minus one is basically zero and, and all those values so that's how we are reshaping this and, and kind of seeing this. So this value is again 0 0.06, which is again between one, right? So this is how we are uh, scaling this, normalizing this thing. So I can delete this particular cell. And the next step is we are creating two variables. One is called as buffer size 60,000 and the other one is batch size. So buffer size. So this is actually used in order to shuffle our data. So the main aspect here is, right, or the purpose of doing this is, Let's say this is a MNIST data set and uh, let's say the first 10,000 images corresponds to the digit 1, the next 10,000 images corresponds to digit 2 and so on. Let's say that there is an order. We don't want our model to look at this order and make predictions based on that order. So for that, we are making sure that the data set is perfectly shuffled so that it doesn't kind of look at the order and make a prediction and, and basically your model is not influenced by the order of the image present in the data set. So for that purpose for shuffling we will later use this buffer size and then we have the batch size batch size is again a critical very critical aspect in our neural network training it's one of the hyper parameters so you probably would have seen epochs and batch size together so batch size is so in a neural network our training would happen is right so i can maybe show this to you so we have a neural network and when we say uh, training is happening so one main thing happens so we have this forward propagation and backward propagation that means your data propagates in this forward direction from the input layer to the output layer this is what we call as forward, forward propagation and it comes back and that's called as backward propagation right and when the backward propagation happens your weights kind of gets updated so it goes here and your output layer gives a prediction and we compare it with the true values and say that no you're not making good predictions now the model updates its weight so that this process actually continues so we continuously update the weight so that our model can make like accurate prediction so that's the idea and uh we say this one forward propagation and one backward propagation right this happens for each batch so you have two when i say 256 that means each batch has 256 images so all these 256 images Will go through this forward propagation and when they come back for backward propagation the weights are updated right if you have a 32 batch size it's going to go in this direction and it, it would come back right so if you consider one epoch in one epoch all the batches should go through this uh, forward propagation and backward propagation and the updates would happen at end of the processing of each single batch so 
here we have 256 right so that means uh, divided by the 60,000 so now you you know that how many times this backward propagation and forward propagation kind of happens so that's the idea so you can call this as a training step so your data flows in this direction forward direction comes back so let's call this as a train step right and at one train step during the backward propagation your weights are updated so at each train step one batch is processed okay and uh, in order to find the number of train step, you can just divide the 60,000 by 256. Let's say that we have this 60,000 divided by 256. And we have, let's say, about 234. So almost you have 234 number of times this forward propagation and backward forward propagation happens to complete this 256 batches. And these many times your weights will be updated. Again, this will change if you have a smaller batch size and so on. But this is... Uh, the information about the batch size and here is like an interesting factor about it so you can't just go ahead and use any batch size that you want because if you are using a larger batch size right that means you need like a larger computation power so if i'm using 256 i need like a larger gpu and if you increase the batch size your training is going to happen faster in this case i'm working with a data set that are smaller images 28 comma 28 so you can use a larger batch size but if you are working with a you know large image epochs or more then you probably have to reduce the batch size it's kind of like we need to uh, do this empirically try to find which is like the proper value again for this case 256 is okay so it's not going to take that much computation as the images are not that large but in general as i said gans training gans are like pretty computationally heavy so here yeah, that's about these two variables one is buffer size 60,000 to shuffle the data and the other one is batch size is uh, creating this 60,000 as 256 individual batches and usually for batch size we use uh, 32 that means 32 images in batch not just images for any data points it can be a numerical data too right so it's like uh, 32 data points in one batch so we can use 32 64 128 256 uh, something like that so i'll run this and the next step is we need to shuffle the data and batch it so for this uh, we are using this tf.data.dataset from tensor slices train image this is one step this is second step and this is the third step so we are basically doing three steps here the first is we are creating a data set object so tf tf.tensorflow.data.dataset so this create a data set object and this is because this data set object is it's basically a better way to pass the data to your model right so that's why it's used so we are creating this data set from this tensor slices tensor slices is nothing but this training images that we are going to pass so this creates this data set object and after that it's going to shuffle it and when we give this shuffle size of uh, shuffle it's basically the buffer size of 60,000 that means the entire size of the data it makes sure that the data is properly shuffled it's not like only specific uh, number of data points are shuffled so some data points are still like following some chronological orders so that some order that won't be there when you put the buffer size as the same as the size of the data set and then we are also using dot batch in order to create batch 256 batches of 60,000 so here we are giving this batch size as 256 so we are creating uh, the 60,000 or batch of the 60,000 and storing it in training data set so we can try printing this not sure you would get some proper information but we can definitely check oh I need to run this first sorry train data set has no attribute shape okay so yeah the data set object probably doesn't have it but this is how it would be so it would have like this uh 256 batches and you have 28 comma 28 pixel and, and uh at at you know one channel and so on so this is like probably like a single batch data set information but yeah that's about it so we have this train data set now let's move on to the other aspect so now this would act as your real image or uh, I can come back to this link. So we have this real image, right? So this is what we represent by this train data set, right? And then now we would kind of use this generator in order to generate random images or sorry, the fake images from this random input. So that would be the next step. So here we are going to create a function called as make generator model. And this function would return the neural network that's 
is nothing but our generator and later we would also create another function called as make discriminator model again that would return the neural network for our discriminator so as i said the purpose for this generator is to get a uh, random input random input basically random numbers and generator generate an image out of it so that's the purpose of this and what we would give here is something called as a latent noise so this is something that we would create i can show this to you it's nothing but a, a normal distribution data let me run this maybe so uh, we are creating this using tf.random.normal so this is going to be some random numbers but not just any random numbers the numbers are going to be normally distributed or you can call this as a, a gaussian distribution uh, where it follows basically a, you have this bell shaped curve so i'm creating one array and that one array has 100 elements right 100 numerical values that follows a normal distribution and then i'm storing this in the noise so this is what i call or this is what i have mentioned using this random input and from this 100 values right it's just you can think about this as a vector it is like a single dimension array from this it should upscale this data upscale this numerical values to build a two dimensional image that you know as the 28 comma 28 pixel and one channel grayscale image so that's what we are going to do I can print and show you this image so when i say print uh noise it will i think to say one because it has like one array right so it has one array of 100 elements so you can say when i say print length of noise it should say one that means it would say that there is only one array but when i say print noise of zero this would give like this yeah 100 elements and now i can make sure that it has actually 100 elements right so this is what we call as this random input that we are going to pass to the model so here we are having this make generated model and the input shape is 100 so this is what we kind of like building this 100 again it's not like you have to use only 100 it's this step is also like kind of an empirical there are like some implications so it can also affect how uh, well your model is handling overfitting and other issues are there but it's mostly empirical a trial and error kind of a thing where you run it with this number see if you're kind of getting a decent model and you kind of change it and then see like what's like the best number for your particular use case that's again empirical so we have this diff uh, define make generator model model is equal to tf.keras.sequential that means we are going to stack the layers sequentially or linearly so we are uh, initiating the model with tf.keras.sequential and model.add layers.dense7726 so first we have this dense uh, layer densely connected layer 77256 you can multiply this to get the actual number of units and use bias is equal to false so when we say use bias is equal to false that means we are explicitly mentioning that we don't want any bias value and again this kind of uh, also observed in the case of GANs that uh, your model kind of converges faster performs well when you don't have any bias values convergence is basically uh, you know the ability of the model to kind of get the optimized weights so again we call this as global minimum mm -hmm. right global optimum like whatever it is global optimum right so where mm -hmm. up, you know after this point you can't improve your model significantly so at this point your loss won't decrease significantly so you have like the perfect weights and bias right so that's what is called as convergence but when you don't have bias your convergence is going to be faster and the model is a bit efficient so we are saying that use bias is equal to false it's it's not kind of a thumb rule but you can always it's preferred to have this bias is equal to false when you are creating this generated model and input shape we are going with 100 100 latent dimension that we have and then we are adding this model dot at ps dot batch normalization so we are getting this output from this dense layer right and we need to make sure that this output is normalized because again this would change the range in which the data is coming out so it's like you have a layer and from this layer you, some output is coming out of it so we have to make sure that the data is like normalized that means like the range is like proper this also helps in like faster convergence and that is also another issue called this covariate shifting and so on so let's not go in detail about all those things let's discuss discuss about it in detail when we 
you know discuss this convolutional neural networks all this neural networks in detail but just for now understand that when we move from one layer to another layer it's better to normalize this data that's coming out of one layer and again this happens only in the training when your model is on inference mode or basically when you're getting predictions out of this this mad batch normalization won't actually happen so that's one thing about it and then we have this model dot layers dot leaky relu so uh you probably would know what is a relu activation function is so again maybe show it to you in a graph we have this relu activation function so it's nothing but uh if your input value is kind of greater than zero it's going to give that same value so you have a layer some output comes out of this and we apply an activation functions to this so see we apply sigmoid when we want the value between zero and one and these activation functions are the factors that add this non-linearity factor to our model so that it could understand complex information so it's not limited to understanding linear relationship but also non-linear relationship so relu is one of that where if the value is greater than zero it would just give up that one as the value so here let's say x is this input and y is the output that we are getting if the x value is greater than zero it's going to give out the same value if it's two it's going to give value two if it's under it's going to give the value as hundred but if it's less than zero or in other words if it's a negative number it's not going to give you the negative number it's going to give you the zero so there is a cap on the uh, lower extreme which is zero so that's about relu but leaky relu is another interesting variation of this uh, relu where it has like slightly smaller negative slope it's not that much but for negative numbers it kind of allows a smaller slope right so this is again works a, a bit slight, slightly better than relu in some cases so we are using this leaky relu here so this is our first dense layer with proper batch normalization and leaky relu and then we have this model dot add layers reshape so we are reshaping this uh, output coming from this layer so that we finally end up with this 28 comma 28 comma 1 so this happens in a step by step process so here we have this 7 comma 7 comma 2 to 6 and then we have this assert so we have also have this assert condition that basically checks or make sure that this shape is uh, none 7 7 to 6 this none basically again as I mentioned there it takes the batch size later if you are passing like uh, 32 images this 32 images would be considered here and I forgot to mention this code is actually it's it's this is the code present in TensorFlow's documentation of DC GAN, deep convoluted GANs. So I didn't add anything much to it. So you can kind of find this code there as well. So yeah, I didn't add anything new. So I just wanted to make that one clear. Right. So we have this asset condition here, and then we have this con 2D transpose layer. So this is an interesting one. Uh not sure if you have heard about this, but you definitely would have heard about con 2d so convolutional 2d layers that is used in the convolutional neural networks for this which is again used for this binary classification and so on where these layers are kind of freely helpful in order to find the edges find this features of present in the image right the convolutional 2d transpose works in the different way so there we have this kernels kernel size and so on filters through the images find critical information but this is more of a opposite of how that works so this would upscale the data coming from let's say we have this single vector single uh, array one dimensional data so we are going to upscale it so this kind of do this convolutional 2d transpose operation where we are upscaling it to multiple dimensions so that finally we would reach to this 28 comma 28 comma 1 again you don't have to worry a lot about the numbers that are kind of used here so later we will understand what's the best way to arrive at this numbers and so on but again uh, the main purpose here is just to understand the working flow of the cans working flow of the generator and discriminator so don't worry if you are not like sure why these numbers are used so that's okay you can actually change these numbers to make your model better too this is like a very simple generator model just that works well for this smaller images right so if you are let's say working with the image of a different size you probably have to change this numbers a lot so you need like let's say you're working with 100 into 100 image so you need to change this and kind of change all these layers such that it's proper for your particular image so this is kind of customizable depending upon the data set that you are working on and the use case that we are working on 
in this case here we are having like 128 units five comma five is this uh size and then we have the stripes and so on padding so we have this max padding and the same padding bias is false and so on so these uh, factors are used again we don't have to worry about this that much so we have this filters right uh, the units and then we have the kernel size stripes and so on and then we have uh, assert uh, make, making sure that it has like these many things and here if you see this the channels that you are seeing here output of this convolutional Tori transpose is equal to the whatever the number of units or the filters that you have in your particular layer so here you have 128 so the output channel is going to be 128 and here uh, we are having this rights of 2 comma 2 same padding so here you are getting the 64 units the channel is going to be 64 and 14 14 here the units is one and we are getting the channel is one and so on so this is the architecture that we are currently using where we have three uh, convolutional 2d transpose layers and the final output is 28 comma 28 comma 1 so if there are like 10 images in a batch we would output like 10 images right so in a single batch so you don't have to worry about this one so we have 28 as i 28 as width and one channel basically images and return the model so basically this make generator model function would uh, return uh, the architecture for your generator and then in this place we are going to just pass some random input to our model and see if it can generate an image so using the untrained generator that's one important thing so we haven't trained our generator yet we haven't compiled it with a loss function we haven't compiled it with an optimization and so on it's just like a simple generator neural network that if you give a 100 input value it would generate an image but you wouldn't know what an image is it's like a random mix of white and black pixels so that's what we are going to do so i'm kind of initiating this make generated model uh, in the variable called a generator and creating this noise vector using this tf dot random dot normal so normally distributed random values single array of 100 values and then i'm passing this so we have this generator right so i'm passing this through the generator which is this function basically right so we have this generator is equal to make generator and i'm passing this noise and the important thing is i'm saying training is equal to false that means when training is equal to false it's not going to update the weights so it's just going to it's like giving a prediction it shouldn't update a weight update the weights in this case so if you are working with neural network or even in machine learning thing right so you train the model and when the training happens you update the weights and you evaluate the model and while evaluating you wouldn't train the weights you just get a prediction out of this so similarly we are saying training is equal to false that means you know we are not going to update the weights and finally we are storing this generated image coming from this generator in the variable called as generated underscore image and then displaying this with plt dot im show grayscale color map grayscale and so on let's run the previous cell two and run this so now we would see this image so this is the random image generated by the model so i mean this is no way closer to our data set which is the mnist digits right so we will come to that so later we will set up this discriminator let the generator know how you should generate the images how it should be closer to the mnist data sets and so on but this is at the start so this is how a untrained generator would generate an image okay so the next part is building the discriminator and the, as i said the purpose of the discriminator is given in image it should say whether it is a real image or a fake image if the discriminator is 100 percent accurate it should say if an image is coming from this real image data set it should say it's real if it's coming from a generator it should say it's false it's it's a fake image but we need to train both of these discriminator should not be weak because if it's a weak right generator can generate an image that is like really bad it's not similar to real image but discriminator can't say like it's a fake image so discriminator should also be kind of stronger it's like both of these trainings should happen simultaneously and generator and discriminator trying to kind of so this generator tries to fool discriminator and discriminator tries to catches the fake images coming from the generator so this is how this would work and this is what we call as this adversarial way of training so that's what happens and as i said discriminator is not as complex as a generator this is just a binary classification convolution neural network that would tell you whether an image is a real or fake this is a binary classification right so we are going to label one class as one and the other class as zero so let's see how we can build this discriminator network
So we have the function called as make discriminator model. Just like the generated model returning your neural network, this make discriminator model will return you a binary classification neural network. So we have this TF Kara sequential, again a linearly stacked sequential model, model dot add. We have this convolutional 2D layers. We have the filters, kernel, kernel size, traits, and so on, padding same. And the input shape is going to be 28281. Again, the same shape of uh, the generated image as well as the sh same shape of the generated, sorry, the real image, which is this 60,000, So it should be that shape. So input is this shape. And then we have this leaky relevance activation. We are also having dropout. Again, dropout helps you in making sure your model is not overfitting. So it turns off few neurons and so on. So you have another set of convolutional layers. If you want, you can add more too. But again, it should be, uh, again, the two models should be close to each other. So your generator should not be very complex and your discriminator is like very simple. So that shouldn't be the case. It should be like, it, it should be like a level playing field so that both can uh, train in a good way. So that's one thing. So and then you have this flattened layer and finally you have the output layer model dot add layers dense. And this is just contains like one neuron. So if you look at this, if this is a classification problem. We would generally use a sigmoid activation function, right? But here we are not going to use it directly. So instead we are going to play with the loss function. So for binary classification, we usually use uh, binary cross entropy. So we are going to use it. So instead of kind of putting this through a sigmoid activation functions, we are going directly going to use the loss. And later we have this uh, calling this function called as discriminator, make discriminator model, store that to the variable called as discriminator and decision is equal to discriminator. So it basically we are passing an image to this discriminator model, getting a prediction. Which image we are passing is nothing but the random image that we generated from the untrained generator. Similarly, this discriminator is now also it's untrained. So it's just going to give some values to run this infrastructure. So it's going to give some values that's stored in this decision because it's not trained it. And then it's the value is not between zero and one because we haven't applied sigma to it. So we are getting this minus 0 0.0001 something. So this is what we call as logits. Logits are nothing but raw output coming from a particular layer or a neuron. So we haven't applied any activation function to it. Right. So and the next step is we are going to set up the loss function and optimizes. This is a very critical step. Using this loss, we are going to give a feedback to the generator. So again, as I said, this is a critical thing where only by this, the generator know how well the model is performing, how well it's able to generate images that is close to images. So when the training happens, there is a constant feedback loop that runs between the discriminator to the generator. So let's say the generator uh, generates 100 images and we have all those 100 images here and we take 100 images from the real sample. Let's say the discriminator is able to find this correctly. So it tells that these 100 images are real image, these 100 images are fake image. Then the generator has not done its job properly, right? The, the discriminator can easily classify that. Now this information is passed to the generator via the loss function parameter. Now the generator know, yes, I haven't done my work properly, so I have to update my weights and make sure that I'm generating good images. So this feedback loop goes on until a point where the generator generates good images or until a point the number of epochs stop. Right? So that's also like other way to look at it. So it runs for as many epochs and there is a constant feedback loop. So that's what you need to kind of remember here. So that feedback loop is given by this cross entropy and this updation of weights, this improvement model improvement happens through the optimizer thing where it optimizes your parameters so that your loss function is reducing. So when a loss is more, that means your model is far from accurate values, accurate predictions. If a loss function value is less, that means your model is good at kind of uh, predicting the values. In this case, when I say prediction, generators prediction is nothing but creating images, generating images and discriminator prediction is predicting real and fake. So yeah, that's the term that I'm using. And uh, we have this, this method returns a helper function to compute cross entropy loss. So we have this binary cross entropy, which is again, usually used in binary classification to say how well a model is performing. And here we are saying from logic is equal to true because we are not applying any sigmoid activations. We are just returning like raw inputs called as logits. So we are saying it's true. So we are storing this method of computing this cross entropy loss, binary cross entropy loss to the variable called as cross entropy, which will be used later. And then we have 
two losses one loss for your discriminator and the other loss for generator if you think about it discriminator loss is nothing but it's how well the discriminator can distinguish real image and the fake image or how well the, you can also see this in a separate way how well your discriminator is able to find real image that is one part and the other part is how well your discriminator can find fake images so you have two losses and then you kind of have these two losses so that would be the loss for your discriminator but generator loss doesn't have to worry about the real image loss so we just need to look at the fake image loss and say that how well it's kind of able to kind of build this fake images and that information that fake loss is also similar to the fake loss that you have here so discriminator would have these two losses but generator is it's just a part of this loss which is how well it can generate fake images let's see how this comes together so discriminator loss this method quantifies how well the discriminator is able to distinguish real images from fakes as i said and it compares the discriminator predictions on real image to arrays of one so we label the real images to zero so let's say that uh, in the sample we have 100 images we label all those to ones and out of those 100 images discriminator predicted correctly for 80 images so you have 80 ones and 20 zeros so it basically compares this 100 ones this ones to the 80 zeros just like the accuracy score thing that we do so we compare that so that's what is represented in the second statement it compares the discriminator predictions let's say of one or zero or real or fake on the real images to an array of ones let's say the real images are labeled as ones and the discriminators predictions on fake images generated images to an array of zero so let's say that the fake images are labeled as zero so we are just comparing it so real loss is equal to cross entropy tf dot ones like real output and uh, and real output so real loss as i said how well the model can find or uh, basically classify real outputs right so for that we need a ground truth here the ground truth is your tf ones real in this is your true labels this is your predicted labels similarly this is your true labels for fake image this is your predicted labels for fake output right so just understand this don't confuse real and true thing so we have we have two set of data points two set of classes and here this is the ground truth so when i say tf dot ones like it will create an array where all the values are one and it's the same shape as the real output so let's say that uh, we have tf dot ones like right and in this let's say that we have an array that has real output right so real output that means let's say there are 10 images and out of those 10 images the model says 8 are real 2 are fake so it failed at two data points let's say that tf dot ones uh, here i have an array that has 10 values one i have five over here and then copy this and put another five right and let's say this is how the model should have predicted it but for last two data points let's say it has predicted it as zero now I say tf dot ones like this is the array you can think about this as the output coming from the model so real output where it should have been all ones but it's two of them are zero when i put this to tf ones like it's going to create an array with the same shape as this one but all the values will be one so as you can see so we have an array that has 10 values all the values are one so basically this tf ones like is used to create an array in the same shape as the attribute that you are passing but all the values should be one similarly uh, zero should create an array same shape as this fake output but all the values will be zero so here this would be a round truth because we know the real images right so this real output are the predictions made on the images coming from the data set the mnist data set or the real images so ideally all these images should have labeled as one but let's say the model was not able to do it it's zero comma zero similarly all the images coming from this should be labeled as zero but let's say the model was not able to do it so here we have the ground truth as the first parameter tf ones like in case of real loss and the real images comparison and we have tf ones tf zeros like in the case of fake output where ideally it should have given all zeros but let's say the model has given only five as zeros and five as ones so that's the real loss and the 
fake loss and we add these two and we get the total loss so it's the ability of the model on distinguishing real image and fake images so how it can how well it is working for real images and fake images so that's about the discriminator loss so and in the case of generator loss that just it, it's cross entropy t of ones like fake output right so it, it's again how will the model is working in terms of uh generating fake images so here if you see it here it doesn't matter if you use ones or twos because in this case you have two labels ones and zeros so that's why we are using it here we are using just ones for fake output but here we use zeros but it's immaterial because this is a separate loss and this is a separate loss this is a loss for discriminator this is loss for generator so don't confuse this once is coming with fake here once is coming with zero so don't confuse you have to look these two separately so here the generator loss quantifies how well it was able to trick the discriminator intuitively if the generator is performing well the discriminator will classify the fake images as real or one here compare the discriminator decision on the generator image to an array of ones so let's let's understand this statements so generator loss it it kind of quantifies this it puts a it puts a numerical value on how well the generator is performing if it's performing well that means the discriminator couldn't look at the image generated by the generator and say it's fake so the discriminator couldn't do it so it, it's kind of fooled by the generator so that's where it should be added and that information is coming to the generator from this generator loss and that we are comparing it with the ground truth in this case where and and, and the output that is fake output this output is coming from the discriminator so let's say that discriminator says out of 10 images five two images are fake and 10 images are real but in reality all the images are fake so the generator is like let's say 20 percent good but it's not that good so this information comes to it from the generator loss okay so that's how we have to look at it so the discrim so the next step is we are done with the loss and the next step is kind of working with the optimizers and it, in keras we have this model dot compile where we passes loss and and you know optimizes and so on but this training of GAN should happen a bit differently where we are going to train two models simultaneously with all this loss and optimization so that's why we are kind of taking a different route so this is not like as simple as a binary classification or a classification problem where you're training a single network but that's the beauty about it right so it's like an interesting use case and interesting concept to understand so yeah going forward so we have this generator loss so i'll run this and now the next step is setting up the optimizers so here it's mentioned right so the discriminator discriminator and the generator optimizers are different since we will train two networks separately so there is a feedback loop that goes in in, in the manner of a loss function value but these two networks generator network and the discriminator are getting trained separately so we are having separate optimizers so the sub uh, generator optimizers optimizes the weights of generator neural network and the discriminator optimizes optimizes or changes the param weights of the discriminator network so in both the cases we are going to use adam optimizers with the learning rate as 1 e per e minus 4 both cases again you can experiment it with different learning rates or different uh, optimizers too so no restrictions on that and the next step is saving the checkpoints of your model as well as your discriminator so again for different epochs so here the directory we are going to create a directory called as uh, training checkpoints dot training checkpoints so we're creating this folder and then we are joining this with the prefix of ckpt short form for checkpoint again it's, it's not complex at all just creating a directory putting all those model artifacts there so checkpoint is equal to tf dot train checkpoint so we have this function in tensorflow itself where we are saving this generator optimizer generated uh, discriminator optimizers and generator model as well as the discriminator model so we are doing that so while training all these checkpoints will be saved for your model so the next step is kind of uh, setting up this training loop training loop is nothing but how your training should happen when your loss should change how your optimizer should work and so on so here we have this number of epochs defined as 100 noise dimension as 100 and the number of examples to generate is 16 so uh again this is not used for training the 16 examples right we are going to use this to visualize how well our model is generating the images at the end of each epoch so we have 100 epochs at the end of each epoch i'm going to send the same input 
same 16 input so if you say this c try so we are creating 16 arrays similarly the one that we have seen before so when you call this uh, noise tf random 1 comma 100 it will generate one array with 100 values so similarly we are going to generate 16 arrays with 100 values so that's what we have given here so c is equal to tf dot random normal normally distributed 100 values should be there and we need 16 such arrays that has this normally distributed 100 values so this 16 values are used to visualize how when your generator is generating the images at the end of each epoch so you have 100 epochs again you can change it to 50 epochs or even 1000 epochs depending on your computer's size or your gpu right so it, it can be any number so it's it's all of all those are like kind of hyper parameter and needs to be tuned but here i'm just going with this value of 100 and the noise dimension is 100 so yeah so seed and the reason that we are generating the seed is at the end of each epoch the input data should be same right the 16 uh, input data should be same and that and at each box in we will see for that input how the model is generating the output so it's like let's say this is our uh it, it can be like understanding how the model is performing so we put 16 input data look at the image it's generating so at first it wouldn't generate good image for the 16 examples so later it would just generate good images for the 16 example no specific reason for using the 16 it was the same number present in the tensorflow documentation and they were able to kind of display it, display the four images properly so we will just go with that so you can see you will reuse the seed over time uh yeah so this step is here but yeah you will use this over time at the end of each epoch and this is used to visualize the progress in an animated gif so the final result that would be it's, it's kind of a gif where we could see in an animated way of you know how well the model was in the first epoch and how well the model was in the under epoch so we could see that in the form of a anim uh, animation where we could see that progress the generator has made so we need the seed for that purpose and then we have this training loop so the training loop begins with generator receiving receiving a random seed as input so we give a random seed as input and the seed is used to produce an image so we kind of put random uh, images to the generator just like the one that we have given here so we put random input to the generator and then the discriminator is then used to classify real images drawn from the training set and the fake images produced by the generator these two lines these two lines is what is represented here so the discriminator is made to classify real images and fake images and the real images are drawn from the data set and the fake images are drawn from the data generated by the generator so this graph or, or diagram that you are seeing is right that's what is represented in lines so the discriminator is then used to classify real images drawn from the training set and fake images produced by the generator and the loss is calculated for each of these models and the gradients are used to update the generator and the discriminator now uh, we have this loss right the discriminator loss and the generator loss so we get the loss function value for discriminator as well as the loss uh, for the generator using this loss we are going to update the parameters using our optimizers adam optimizers so that's what is given here so we uh, yeah this is what basically happens so you put random input to the generator generate images put those images to the discriminator as well as real images to the discriminator so it predicts it you get a loss value here you get a loss value here. and then you let the model know that this is your loss value update your weights improve yourself so it kind of happens over 100 epochs and at the end of 100th epoch we would have a decent model where the generated generator would kind of give like decent images close to it and the generator wouldn't be able to do this alone so we need a discriminator in order to make this generator win so that the generator knows how when it's performing right so that's the beauty of this so here we are going to use this tf dot function so this annotation this at the rate causes the function to be compiled so here we are going to pre-compile all the steps that would happen so this is what we called as a tensorflow computation graph so it's like laying out all the steps that should happen in a computation graphs and all the steps should happen so in the previous video we were discussing about how we can build neural networks in pytorch so initially pytorch kind of came with the ability not to be compiled but the ability to build these graphs on the fly dynamically uh, initially tensorflow has this ability only to be compiled later from tensorflow 2.1 they added this ability to dynamically create these graphs 
So now it has both this option of compiling this and building this graph on the fly. So here we are just going to compile it, compile it where we say that this step should happen after this step. This step should happen after this step. So it's we are just laying out the process in the graph. So that that's what this decorator does. So we call this as a decorator function. So add the rate tf dot function. So this tf dot add the rate tf dot function is applied to this function called as train step. So we are defining a function called as train step, passing a set of images. This images is nothing but a batch of image, right? So just think about it. As I said, each training step would take one batch, do a forward propagation, do a backward propagation, and while doing backward propagation, it would update the weights. So you have this noise tf dot random dot normal batch size noise dim. So we know noise dimension is nothing but hundred. Batch size is nothing but we are generating two fifty six images. So you put two fifty six real image to this function. And you generate 256 random noise vectors. So, with TF gradient tape as gen tape and TF gradient tape as this tape. So, generator tape and discriminator tape. This is used to calculate the gradients. Gradients are all those differential things, differentiating loss in terms of parameters. Let's let's come to that a bit later. Look at this one. So, now you have two sets of images. One is your 256 noise, 256 random input and 256 real image coming from the batch because we have already created a batch out of this, right? Train data set, I think so. We have created a batch each with 256 images. So now you have two set of data. One is your uh, images. This is your true data set. Sorry, not the true data set, the real images and the fake images are going to be generated from this 256 noise. So you put this 256 noise array to this generated model. So your training is true. That means here your model's weights should update. Previously, we add this training is equal to false when we printed, generated this image. But here we are saying training is equal to true because we need to update the weights because this is where your training happens. So this is generated image. You are putting 256 noise to your generator, generating 256 images. So you have two sets now. One is your 256 generated images and 256 real images. And now you put these two to the discriminator just like the diagram represents here. So let's say we have 256 images here, fake images, 256 real images. Put that here, get the prediction, get the loss. So that's what happens in these two steps. Here also the training is equal to true because we also need to train the discriminator as well. right? So we have this discriminator real output is nothing but the real images are getting passed training is equal to true real output and fake output is discriminated generated images fake output so we are getting this and generated loss generated loss equal to fake output real output fake output and so on so it's basically all those uh, generated loss and the discriminated loss that we have at so generated loss you should put fake output for discriminated loss you should put real output and fake output so that it could add these two losses so we are just calling these two functions over here so for generator, you just need to put fake output, right? As we have discussed, it just need one parameter for discriminator. It needs two of this. We would add this. So that's why you have these two things. And once you get this loss, you are going to find the gradients. Gradients is again, nothing but how much your loss is going to change. if You're going to change a parameter, right? Uh, again, partial differential of loss in terms of your parameter or your pi c1 right so you are getting this gradients using gen tape where gen tape is the gradient calculating system for your generator and disk tape is your discriminator taping thing so gradient calculation system and then you have this gradients tape so you are also passing generator loss generator dot trainable variables discriminator loss discriminator like trainable variables so these variables will be changed again this is like this differential of these two things so once we have this gradient, we put this to the optimizers and your optimizers would look at this and change your variables, trainable variables or trainable parameters and this step would go on, right? Again, if you are working with a different data set, these steps won't change. You probably would change like the number of epochs, the batch size and the generator model and the discriminator model, but probably the train step won't change much. So yeah, you can just understand this in a clear way. You can just change all those models and other hyperparameters. So the steps is as we have given here. Now you can look at this statements. Now this would make more sense to you. Training loop begins with generator receiving a random seed as input. This one. So generator is receiving random noise as input. And that seed is used to produce an image. So this noise is used to generate image that is stored in generate images. 
The discriminator is then used to classify the real images drawn from the training set and fake images produced by the generator. These two things. And the loss is calculated for each of these models and the gradients are used to update the generator and discriminator. So this is what is happens in these two things. Right. And finally, we would uh, kind of apply this to the optimizers. Once we kind of find the gradients, we apply this uh, to this and, and yeah, kind of this completes the training step. So the end of training step is nothing but updating the weights. So you start with a single batch, go to the forward propagation, do a backward propagation, update the weights. So your train step is done. Your single batch is done. Now you put another batch, do the same thing, update the weights. Then again, this goes to the next batch and so on. So this is for one step, one batch. This has to happen for all the batches and this should happen for all the epochs. So when we say one epoch, that means all the batches should do this. So that's what happens in the function called as define train. So here it takes in the input data set and epochs. This in turn would call the train step. Right? So let's understand this. So we are calling this train function. So actually this is what happens even in a classification model all this uh, finding this generator uh, sorry not generator finding this loss gradients and optimization happens in your classification model too instead you wouldn't have a generator model you just have this binary classification model here we are naming this as discriminator so we would do the same thing but in keras just makes all these things easily so we don't have to worry about all these things right but under the wood this is what is happening so it's, it's again a good way to understand what's happening so that we have a clear idea about it so here we have this train step where for epoch in range epoch so here we have taken 100 epochs so the model should train for 100 epochs and at each epoch it should train with each batch so at each epoch from 1 to 100 it should train with each 256 batch and at end of each batch should update the weights and this updating of weights and all those things happens in this train step so that's what happens in this training and other things are just pretty simple so here we are going to generate and the same images and this is used to display the image at the end of each epoch so later we would have this function called as generate and save images this is in a function so we are not calling it so it's okay if you have this function later as well uh, so maybe you can look at this first predictions is equal to model test input training is equal to false so model is nothing but your generator model uh, that we are passing here again you can just go through these things these are pretty simple so we generate images and display it there this is those 16 images that i was talking about so at end of each epoch so you would generate 16 images from the seed and display it there so that's what we have here and at we would save the model at the end of 15th epochs to this checkpoint prefix to the checkpoint directory that we have over here right so to log the model and we also would print the time taken for each epoch and finally once your model is trained for 100 epochs you would display and here we would display the images right so we have display clear output this thing and here we are displaying the model actually in this generate and save images we are displaying it at the end of each epoch we are calling this and once all this epochs is done also at the end of 100th epoch we are displaying all the images and again other things are pretty much simple so we again call this train method so call the train method defined above to train the generator and discriminator simultaneously note training gans can be tricky it's important that the generator and discriminator do not overpower each other example that they train at a similar rate again all those this is like the notebook that i downloaded from tensorflow documentation so yeah so all these are like kind of warnings and note that they have given so make sure that you are following these two so it shouldn't be overpowering this is what i was telling you before so you shouldn't have a very complex generator and a simple discriminator so you would never get a decent generator in that case so it should be a level playing field and at the beginning of the training the generator image looks like random noise as training progresses the generator digits will look increasingly real after about 50 epochs they resemble mnist data set so we call this train function that would again further uh, call this train step and do all this trainings and so on. We will run these steps. And yeah, let's train this. Save this to the checkpoint that we have created before. And then we can just display the images. Uh, display a single image using the epoch number. So you can just give a single epoch number and display image here. We are basically using this in order to again this function right this display image we are going to use this in order to create this anime thing where let me show this one. 
so the training is happening so time for first epoch is 20 seconds this is how your image looked like at the first epoch it's no way close to uh, mnist digit rights but as the epochs kind of increases we would get like more accurate image not accurate but images that are resembling your mnist digits and return digits so we are saving this images at this image uh, with this particular number i think it's getting saved here so generate and save image it's saving it's getting saved here and in order to create this anim animation of of your epoch how your image looked at first epoch second epoch third epoch all the way up to 100 epochs we are using this particular uh, code you can go through it it's not like that complex simple code of creating a gif and then we are going to display it but yeah that's the overall concept starting to look like a number but yeah so that's about it so all your images will be saved here so at the end of first epochs so you would save the image with a number 0001 so you are using 04s and one number here so we have 0 1 2 first epoch second epoch third epoch and so on and if you want you can train it with thousand epochs too no issues there if you have that much computation so later we will use this in order so if you see this code quickly right so we are reading all these images we are using this blob as i said it's used to match patterns of files so it would load all the files with image prefix and names with dot png and sort this based on this number one two three all those things and then uh display it in the form of a gif an animation and store this in dc gan dot gif and later we would display that and and this line basically embed this and display this that's why we are using this tensor flow docs and you will see this uh, gif here so this is about the code we have this code uh, executed here so this is going to take some time so yeah i can show this to you how the numbers look like at the end here you can see it's like 0 8 probably 8 or 6 or something again it's far from perfect but again you can increase the epochs or improve the model in order to get better predictions but yeah it's it's slightly similar to the handwritten digits that we are getting so finally you would also get an anime from this as well like uh, a gif so if i would save this as a gif but let's see if i can open this right so you can see this gift right so from the first epochs this is how the model has evolved on building this and return digit so this is the gift that we are creating and this is the code for it and embedding it so uh, i hope everyone is clear until this point i know that this code is pretty complex compared to a simple image classification code but again once you practice this you even have some doubts you rewatch that particular section of the video again it's, it's like a really interesting use case and again it's it's like a really good thing to know it's not like you know deep learning you just know image classification and simple stuff so you can just put this on a resume build some interesting applications of this image generator too so that's like a great thing to do so please go through this try this code for yourself once maybe to make things simple and just give you a quick recap of what we have done so first we are importing the dependencies and then uh, we are just loading the train images we don't need the labels and stuff we don't need the test data set train images and reshape this normalize this between minus one to plus one it's better for GANs and buffer size for shuffling batch size uh, this is how we can create normally distributed random noise and creating generator neural network and then discriminator neural network and then you are kind of setting up the loss so discriminator should get the laws for real as well as fake images to understand how it can distinguish real image and fake image and generated image should know how well it can generate fake images and then you are setting up the optimizers giving the checkpoints 16 images to print at the end of each epoch and then we have this tense of the function compiling it with saying that generate images put those real images and fake images to the discriminator calculate the loss find the gradients and update the parameters using your adam optimizers and finally run this for 100 epochs at each epoch all those 256 batch should undergo this particular step and then finally you generate and save the images put this to the animation yeah so maybe uh, you can just run this color file again and see how this uh, numbers are getting generated but please go through the code line by line or even look at this code and type it in your collab environment i'm sure that you probably follow that process but yeah this would really be helpful and I'll probably at a later point next video or probably at a later video I'll show you how you can do this in Keras. It should be easier in Keras but I'm not very sure about it but I'll see if I could make a video for that.
so that's it from my side and i really hope that this is helpful for you let's see you in the next upload thanks for watching